What's going on, everybody? I want to do a quick review over NASDAQ and what happened this week. This is actually the micro NASDAQ futures contract. But disclaimer, before I get into this, this is all ICT inner circle trader concepts. This is also going to be hindsight, so don't be in my comments. I'm just using this as a te teaching purpose and um, just kind of explain how market maker buy models work and how you can you know position yourself into the market. So with that being said, on uh, last Sunday, so a week ago, I was looking at this and noticing the original consolidation and the reaccumulation. So this part didn't happen yet. I can actually take this away. Knowing that, and a lot of things derived from the daily and the weekly timeframe as well, but I was also targeting this daily volume imbalance. And then we also had this fair value gap on the daily timeframe. So I knew I was bearish and I was looking for price to find a point to reverse at. I didn't know that exactly yet, um, but I also knew we were inside of a market maker buy model. So if I played this out, let me just get rid of this. We ended up having our original consolidation, accumulation and our smart money reversal, which happened exactly at our daily volume bounce. So if you go out to the daily time frame, you're gonna be able to find that. We had our first level of distribution, second, and then we finally rated above these buy side liquidity equal highs right into this fair value gap. You can also look on the daily time frame. This is a daily fair value gap as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down to the 30 minute and I'm gonna show you guys something else as well. So for those who are new to market maker buy or sell models um, or any of ICT's concepts, all of them are fractal. So what that means is they can happen on any time frame and they can happen within each other. So if we are looking at the hour time frame, right, we have this larger market maker buy model. And if you jump down to a 30 minute, we have a smaller market maker buy model residing inside of the hour market maker buy model. So maybe a little confusing, um, but I really just wanted to show how beautiful this price action really was and how you could have capitalized and positioned yourself into the market to obviously make some gains. So last week I talked about <clears throat> market maker buy or sell models and how you want to have them symmetrical. Um, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a cold is you want to have them basically mirroring each other. So if you look on the left side here, we had our first stage of accumulation, reaccumulation, and then our smart money reversal. Now we have our first stage of distribution, which is happening right on top of the old selling, right? You want to have your stages symmetrical. Okay, so new buying, right, was happening on old selling. And same goes for this, right? I don't have it marked up because this is our Asian range. <clears throat> but we had our second level of distribution happening right where our first stage of reaccumulation was happening. Okay, and then we finally rated above the buy side liquidity, which was resting above here, right? Equal highs. Okay, so now I want to dig into Tuesday's um, price action and basically how I was able to capitalize some profits. And I think it was one of the best setups for this week. Um, and again, I want you to remember what was happening on the higher time frame. Okay, so after we completed that first smaller market maker buy model we're still residing inside of the larger time frame market maker buy model okay so on tuesday i was looking at a few things for myself to get positioned into the market so i'm looking at this before 8 30 open i always trade new york session um these are all central time so adjust it to whatever time you're at but 8 30 is my open for futures now during London session, we ran up, we took out the Asian range high, we ran above the buy side of liquidity, and then we decided to drop down and right at the 830 open, we dropped down, took out Asian range low, and we dug into this fair value gap. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so the fair value gap was from this low to this high. Okay, and I'll just put it underneath the Asian low to make it a little more clean.
Okay, so before this happened, and I'll, I'll use the replay button for it. You would have been looking at price like this. You know you're bullish because you're in a larger time frame market maker buy model. Okay, you're waiting for price to give you a signal to buy price. You want to buy price in a discount. You don't want to buy it at a premium. Okay, so what is a discount? You're looking at the range. So the last swing low. Okay, we have a higher low to the left of it and a higher high to the right of it. Okay, so swing low from this low to the high here. Okay, so you know you want to be buying in 62 or 71, which is what? OTE. Okay, anything below equilibrium, which is 50%, is in a discount. And now you're pairing that with a fair value gap. And if we go down to a 15 minute, we can refine it even more. Okay, so I'm looking for PD arrays inside of my OTE area because that's in a discount, right? So if I was looking at this, we have a fair value gap plus an ICT order block, which is this down close candle. Okay, so if I bring this out here, the red line is the end of the day, and this is the open for me. Now, if I was to drag my fib once again, I'm looking for this area. Why is that? Because it's in a discount. Okay. And all I'm going to be doing is targeting the buy stops. So if I play this out, let me get rid of this. If I'm playing this out, I'm going to be first targeting the buy stops resting above here. Okay. So I believe this was created during London. And then we also know from the market maker buy model on our time frame, we're going to be targeting overall this original consolidation. This is fair value gap because um, on the hour time frame and the daily. Okay, so let me jump back down to a 30 minute. If we were looking at this, we'd be looking for price to dig into here. So you could have put your entry somewhere in this fair value gap. And then you could add stops just below that, okay? So let's just do 50 points, okay? And then targeting our first objective here and then our second objective, which would be up here. Okay, so right at 8.30 open, price digs into this fair value gap. And last week I was talking about fair value gaps and how to use them. And somebody made a comment about them. And I just kind of want to clear that up as well. Fair value gaps. It doesn't matter if price trades through them. It just matters about the body and the closure of them. Okay. And this will give you confidence in the trade saying we're already in this, right? Say we took the trade at the mean threshold of this fair value gap. Price trades through it. Okay. Maybe you're a little worried, but then you see price close. Then you see price open and then it closes and you know that, okay, the bodies have closed above the fair value gap. So that gives you more confidence in the trade to hold it and obviously, you know, go to your take profit. So if we play this out, okay, price comes back down to the fair value gap. And if we're looking at a five minute as well, what is this? From the swing low to swing high. That's an OTE, right? Paired with this order block. Okay, so if I was looking at this trade, let's say we missed our initial entry here. We could have waited for price to run up, come back down into this order block plus this OTE. Okay, so that's just multiple ways of you being able to get into the market and position yourself into the market. Okay, so price ran all the way up above the buy side here. Let me play this out and I'll go on to the next day. Okay, so let's look at Wednesday. Um, something I also wanted to mention as well, um, just how accurate these standard deviations can really be. Um, again, it's not a end all be all type of thing, but it really does show the power in ICT's concepts. Um, 
you know, plus three standard deviations, look at the close of the day and where price ended. It's just, it's, it's so beautiful. So let's go ahead and look at Wednesday. Now, Wednesday, we'd be looking at price to raid above this original consolidation into this fair value gap. And if we go back to a daily time frame, we know we have this fair value gap from this high to this low. So we know we want price to run into at least the mean threshold of this fair value gap, right? So let's go back down to a 30 minute. Okay, so price, there was no signal for me to be buying, right? Especially coming into the 830 open, we already ran into this fair value gap. Okay, so now we've now completed this entire market maker buy model. I shouldn't be looking for more buying. Why? Because we've already completed this market maker buy model. We're now inside of a fair value gap that is bearish, right? We're bearish overall in the daily time frame. So price runs into this fair value gap almost closes it. And if we look at the 15 minute, there really wasn't much for me to, to get in on this, to be honest with you. Um, besides just the fair value gap, you could have entered solely off of that as well. Um, I just personally did it. Okay. So I'm just showing you guys how you could have positioned yourself or know how price was trading at that moment. Okay. So let me go back down to a 30 minute. I really wanted to talk about Thursday, because I think Thursday's price action was absolutely beautiful. Let me just close this out real quick. Okay. So looking at Wednesday or Thursday, we know that the market maker buy model has been completed. We know we're inside of this fair value gap on a higher time frame, and we've just traded into it. So I'm not looking for any more buying. I'm waiting for price to give me a signal to break down and show me one of my models. So if we're looking at this, right, this is the true day open, this line here and the close. Okay, so price trades up into it at 830. We start breaking down. And then what do we do? <clears throat> Let me get rid of this. Price trades below this. What is this? This is a breaker. Right. So all we did, and this is one of my models personally, is the breaker pattern. Understanding obviously higher time frame context is key as well. But all we did was we broke down, broke structure, came back up, retested it, coupled with this fair value gap. Right. And this could be one of your models. And this is definitely one of mine. And I took a trade on this. We dug into this breaker and then we dropped. And what would we be doing? We would be targeting sell side liquidity. So all we have to do is look to the left of us. Okay, there's sell side resting beneath this low. And we could also use the standard deviations to give us um, some targets as well. And you can see again, at five standard deviations, we we're only a few points off of closing the day, basically on point, about 20, 25 points away, okay? Um, if we we're looking at Fridays, I don't think there was much on Fridays, but it was definitely, um, I believe a Judah swing or something like that. Um, actually, what I wanted to talk about was this fair value gap. Yep, so this was Friday's close. Let me just exit out of this. And all we did was we ran right into this fair value gap, came up, and now we've just kind of closed out the week here. So um, it was just a little breakdown for you guys. I wanted to show the market maker buy model and basically how you could position yourself every single day. Um, I'll be dropping more and more videos. I posted on Twitter today that during February, I'll be doing a 5K to six figures um, challenge and just kind of showing you guys how I am going to be trading that. Um, I don't care about the time limit. And um, yeah, without further ado, I appreciate you guys and good luck and good trading.